Hi everybody, Prof Gordon here from Exam Success. And I've got another great tip. If you're not going into the exam and knowing this, I think you're a step behind the other candidates. All right, this is something I think is showing up on your exam and you really gotta know it. So let's jump into it. Okay, so this question I think you've gotta be able to handle. This is calculating the money weighted rate of return and there's a lot going on here in terms of this question. So let's break it down. First of all, they're giving us the transactions and rates of return over a four year period for a wealthy investor in their brokerage account. And let's see what information they're giving us. So we've got years one to four. We've got new investments at the beginning of the year. We've got to make sure we know this. We've got withdrawals at the end of the year. And then they're giving us the investment returns for the year. So for the money weighted rate of return, we need to find the cash flows. And from these cash flows, we're going to calculate the internal rate of return. That's how we're going to calculate the money weighted rate of return. So that's the first thing. All right, you probably knew that. Okay, no secret there. But let's interpret the information that's given in this table. This is what is critical. This is how CFA Institute's gonna, gonna trick a lot of candidates. Okay, so let's make, give us some space here. So the first thing that we've got to do is figure out uh, the cash flow. So cash flow zero, that's nice and easy. That's the first cash flow. That's a $15,000 deposit. That's right at the beginning of the year. Even though it says one, this is at time zero because it's at the beginning of year one. There's the first trick. So that's 15,000. Now I've got to tell my calculator inflows and outflows. I've got to be consistent here. So I'm going to treat the deposits into the account as money coming out of my pocket. So I'll put a negative sign in front of there. Negative 15,000. Okay, now let's find cash flow one. So cash flow one, we deposited 10,000. This says at the beginning of year two. Well, the beginning of year two is the same as the end of year one. So let's just make sure that we know this. Okay, these are probably simple items that you know. We're gonna get on to the tricks in a minute. So hang in there, stay with me. Okay, cash flow number two. Cash flow number two, well now what we've got to look at here is we've deposited 12,000 at the beginning of year three, which uh, as I said, is the same as the end of the year two. So that's 12,000. Now this is the first trick that most candidates fall for. It's not just, uh, oh, a deposit of 12,000. Okay, don't fall for that. We have this $3,000 withdrawal at the end of year two that's hanging around that we have to uh, take into account. So we need to make the adjustment here. So we now have 12,000 as the deposit at the beginning of year three or the end of year two. And then we have a $3,000 withdrawal. We're taking that back, putting it into our pocket. That's why I put the plus sign there. So cash flow two is actually negative 9,000. On a net basis, it was simply a deposit of 9,000. This is the first signal to crack the code. Hang in there because you know don't think it's game over and you got it already because there's more coming here. Uh, now, cash flow three. All right, cash flow three, let's follow the same process. So we made a deposit of 9,000 at the beginning of year four, which is the same as the end of year three. So that is a $9,000 deposit. And we now are picking up the signal here, the pattern. We withdrew 5,000 at the end of year three. So that's money coming back to us in our pocket. So that's 5,000. And so the net cash flow for year three is a deposit of 4,000. So we're building up these cash flows. Okay, if you clicked off and you, you left, too bad you missed this. You know, all the people who click off here, they're now going to miss the next point. I'm glad you stuck around here. Cash flow four, this is the key. To be able to get this, this 
it cracks the code here because now we've got to follow through in terms of the pattern uh, of building this up to calculate the internal rate of return we've got to assume that whatever has built up by the end of our four-year period is all withdrawn so now we've got to fill this in and we've got to follow through so let's do this in, in the easiest way possible let me show you remember you only have a minute and a half to do this question so uh so i would do this i'd have a running total going i start off with 15,000 that's my deposit and then and then I, I earn 15% so that's uh, $2,250 so now I'm up to 17,250 all right so now uh, I'm at the end of year one and I deposit uh, 10,000 more so 10,000 goes in and now I'm up to 27,250. And now uh, the uh, second year, we lose 10%. So uh, I'm going to subtract uh, 2,725. Okay. And then don't stop there. We also withdraw 3,000 from the account. So let's subtract 3,000. You can see you're going to need room. You got to, you got to go into the exam with this planned out already. So now we're down to 21,525. Okay. So I'm ready for this. I know exactly what I'm doing. I've got the page outlined here uh, to work within the space. Uh, and uh, in my scratch paper I'm writing on. Okay, so now we're down to 21,525 and we deposit 12,000. So this now brings us up to 33,525. Okay, so now uh, we, uh, we earn 8% in this year. So that is another $2,682. And we withdrew 5,000. So let's take out 5,000. So now I'm going to carry this up to the next level here. That takes us up to a total of 31,207 dollars. And now we earn 10 percent. Oh, sorry, we deposit 9,000. That takes us to uh, 40,000. 207. Now we earn 10% in this year four. So that's uh, $4,020.70. So this takes us up to 44,227.70. This is the figure that we're going to drop in to our calculator. So now 44,000 227 and 70 cents that's going to be our cash flow for then we're going to uh, push uh, the IRR button and uh, we're going to compute this and it's going to give us a figure of 5.23 percent that cracks the code there it is so now we've got it here we now know how to calculate the money weighted rate of return given this type of information uh, from CFA Institute and now we can move on to the next question all right thanks for hanging in there I got a lot of great videos uh, with these tips on them so make sure that you subscribe make sure you go to the next video and watch that as well